Okay, day 398 off the grid, and I'm just showing the completion of the solar panel wiring. And here it is. This blue wire here. That takes it through to the shed where I have bonded it just onto one of the main breakers. In fact, it shares this a breaker with three little panels up there and the big 160 up there so it's kind of grouped with them because of the similar angle and because I couldn't be bothered installing a separate breaker for it don't have the room that would be a big job but I'll just show you how I put it in no mucking around with any MC4s I've just gone straight in here into one side of this gland connected it inside the box obviously which you don't really need to see it's just connecting it to some screw terminals and for this other gland, I've stopped it off by getting a bit of cable insulation, filling it with hot melt glue and just winding it in as a plug so present prevents moisture ingress into there and if I ever want to re-do um, the solar panel somewhere else in the future and I want to use just two MC4 cables, I can easily remove that. So that's basically it really. Um, as you might note, although it'll be hard to see on the video, I have actually moved these panels further forward. I've moved them about, or oh, she would be maybe about half a foot to the right and about the better part of a foot further forwards. So I think that should pretty much completely solve the shadowing issue, although I don't think that was a great issue. But nevertheless, I wanted to move it. It turned out to be quite easy to move in the end. It wasn't a biggie like I was worried about yesterday while I was working at Mavtech. Because it's, you know, I get really frustrated at times when I've got a problem that I need to solve and I pretty much know how I'm going to solve it, but I don't have the time to get on to solving it, so I'm just left with the problem in my head. Although sometimes that serves to enhance the solutions. Like for example this, if the day hadn't been so hot and I hadn't taken frequent breaks I might have done this slightly differently but I think the way I came up with was the best I could have come up with in terms of an effective solution that was quick and easy or as I say quick and dirty. So that's the solar panel on day 398 OTG and I've been doing a bit of work on batteries too so I'll show that in a second as well. Well the light's not so good in here but here we are in the bee shed and I removed the 100 amp hour AGM battery from the A shed that was spare and here it is here. I've slotted it into this bank and at the moment it's connected in to this existing car battery using these tinsy little clip leads and you may be thinking well that's pretty heinous. Well what I'm actually doing here is I'm, I'm equalising it so to speak. I don't mean equalising it by ch by charging it up to a super high voltage to equalise the cells. I just mean that I'm bringing this battery's voltage to the same as the others in that part of the bank so that I can unite it and it will behave well with them. I could have used an external charger but I thought if I do this, um, it's probably the best way to do it. These clip leads deliberately add a bit of resistance and not much current's flowing. They're not even warm. You know it's just bringing the voltage up I don't know if I'd want to go and turn on the toaster oven right now though with this connected like this because if it started drawing a few amps out of that battery then we might end up with some um, dripping PVC and all sorts of heinous things but this is probably just about ready to wire and I'm going to rewire the bank a little bit to accommodate this configuration but that should work out pretty well And I don't think much more needs to be said about that until I do it. Oh, one thing is that that will mean that once I've done that, there'll be one, two, three batteries on the left hand side of the 24 volt split system, and essentially two batteries this one and this one at the back on the right hand side. And you may be thinking, well, isn't that going to create an imbalance? And yeah, it might, it might. 
I know that this battery here is not quite up to snuff, so I could in fact just about take that one out and just put this one in, but these are so heavy to move, I'd rather just leave it there doing something. But of course with my configuration, that ain't a problem because with the balanced charge controllers here, I can even have an imbalanced battery bank and it'll still bring it into balance because that's what it does. Which is awesome. You know, to the point, and I've probably said this before so I'm not going to go on to this, I could even like say draw 12 volts off one of these sides and it would bring it back into balance. So I could actually have asymmetrical battery banks. I could have for example one side that's got a few more batteries and possibly even a few more solar panels and be using some 12 volt loads on that as well as the 24 volt loads and as long as it can all keep up with the demand then that would be totally fine now that's one thing you can't do with those battery balances that are starting to get popular um, I believe that this method is a, a superior way to balance the bank as you can see the voltage here is a little bit lower on this top and then it is on the bottom well that's partly due to this multimeter I mean not multimeter but meter being a bit dubious but this one's just bringing that new battery back up so things are going well in here in the bee shed and we've been enjoying the toaster oven and that saves lighting fires on really hot days except to the point when the rubbish builds up and we've got to have it burn off. Well, I'm going to go now and wire that up and show you the complete wiring if you're interested. Right, I've just reconnected the batteries. I mean reconnected as in I've reconnected the charge. They're charging all together now. They're operating as a group. So, let's see if we can quickly have a quick look at the wiring. Well, yeah, it is, it is a pretty messy bank because that's what happens when you've got a collection of different size AGM batteries and some have got terminals on one end and the other end and some have got terminals on both ends, some have got terminals at the front like this. Yeah, matching them up is a bit of a nightmare, but it can be done. So, the new connections are the negative here, which is, well, you can't see that's too dark, but the main terminal... This is negative Y, even though it's red, it's black at the ends. Goes to the new battery, and its negative terminal goes across here to the original battery in the bank. So that's the negatives, right? The new positives are a bit more sensible. The main terminal here, where the two banks connect, because remember, this is two banks of 12 volts. It's two 12 volt banks, in other words, it's not like a lot of. 24 volt series sets in parallel it is two 12 volt banks in series so that's the junction point there through that nice big bit of copper but anyway the positives will go there to there to there and some might think this is, is obscenely bad battery bank practice and you know it probably is but it doesn't seem to matter that much I have made an attempt to try and balance things in the sense that these negative wires are a lot longer but they're thicker so these this positive runs shorter but the wires are thinner so sort of tends to balance out a bit but I think this will work pretty well but of course time will tell it's oven ease tonight and unless I light the coal range which I should do to burn off the rubbish accumulation I'm going to be using the toaster oven and that would kind of be cool because then I'll better give this bank a new bit of a whack. Here's the starter battery that I had in here as a helper battery as a bit of a boost. Now its role in here may not be over yet because I may find now that the other bank, the right hand bank or the lower bank in terms of these charge controllers may now be the one which is smaller so maybe I might just throw the boost battery onto that we'll see okay I think that's enough of solar power now for day 398 off the grid certainly off the grid 